Hey everybody, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today, we're just looking at fish room changes. I've been working on this, it feels like, I'm gonna say months, but it hasn't been that long. But just in stages, you can see here, the turtles are finally gone. So I've got the, the wood and the rocks out for now, because I had to get them out while I caught uh, the turtles. They all went to Dean's. And then here I've got some bleach. So we had lots, <clears throat> we had really bad black beard algae and stuff on the back. But you can see that that's all dying off. And then you can see here I've got stuff growing on these rocks. And that was java moss. And I want to use these in a different tank without bringing over java moss. So I yanked out all these from this tank over here. You can see there's moss and stuff growing into the back. And that's fine. It's just it tends to take over. And so when I go to reset this tank, we'll move all the fish. We'll move all the shrimp. You can see there's lots of shrimp in there. And uh, we'll basically reset it like this guy. Now, unfortunately, I'm down to one of these yellow platies. And is there a bite? Nope. The turtles, the baby turtles started chasing them and actually took bites out of them and I lost two of them. So that's a big bummer. But uh, you know, we'll, I've got a big group of these ones that are more orange and yellow going and we'll move them and we'll get them situated and, and all of that. So what I've been working on here, <clears throat> Making this into the office, you know, my office slash fish room. The 800 gallon is now moved, and you might have saw pictures if you're following me on Facebook of the movies, a forklift, and, and that kind of stuff, and we've got it plumbed in, but it still sits empty. And you can see here I've got the lights on, and we're all plumbed in back here, ready to go, automated. But there's things I want to do. So one, we want to get all the scratches out. This tank's, you know, at least five years old now. And ladybird, the scratches aren't very deep. They're, they're not very deep at all, but it looks way worse when there's not water in it. But these are all just teeth marks. And, you know, kind of like a, you know, a dog has scratched it up or whatever. This will buff out pretty easy. I'm gonna pay someone to do that. Someone that got recommended to me by the guy that built the tank. And so it's just sitting empty. And uh, by the time you watch this, you'll, it'll probably have been done. But the goal is get this all buffed out. So it looks good. I think the guy quoted me about 800 bucks to do that, which if you've ever done it yourself, you're like, oh, maybe it's worth it. It's a lot of work to buff. Uh, but if you do it yourself, you could probably do it for less than 150 bucks with parts. But it takes a lot of time. And with a project this big, if I was to do one part incorrectly, like get it too hot or something like that, I don't want to jeopardize a $20,000 aquarium. If it was, I've done tanks like 180 gallons and lower before, kind of not a problem. But this, I wanna make sure that it's done right. So I'm willing to pay a professional that does it all the time. But then once it's buffed, I want to uh, bleach it. So you can see here, there's black beard algae and stuff that's dried. And the goal will be fill it up with water, put in, you know, a bunch of bleach and kill off all of that. You can see over here, uh, looks like some java moss growing into the background again. And again, that'll just take over. And the problem is you have to get into this aquarium to manage that. So when it just starts spreading, there's nothing I can do about it. So we'll be putting in different substrate and everything. And uh, my, my Roomba here, our power heads have uh, 12 foot cords. It makes it easy for the Roomba to find them. There was one cord hanging out of here and it grabbed it out and dragged it around. So I gotta free my Roomba in a little bit. But uh, yeah, this is a tank that we were measuring lights with. And that one came out, and I'll show you what we're doing. Well, yeah, let's go over there. So we're, you know, I'm building this area uh, right now of the office. And what is what is this going to do? This desk can go up and down, so I can do a, a talking head, standing thing. And the goal is to, you know, put some lighting in and stuff, which we haven't yet. But light this desk up so that I could film and show you different projects and, and stuff like that. Um, you know, maybe I'm building something out of PVC, maybe I'm showing off, you know, these are tester foods. Uh, you can see here I've got networking stuff that's gonna get, you know, right now the cable just goes to my desk right here. But I need to order different cables and stuff like that and get everything, you know, this everything looking better. But if we show you back here, which I've got, you know, like cable runs so I can put it on the floor and not trip. I just gotta put that in. I just, haven't put it in because I want everything to be in the final spot before I do it. Um, 
So we come back here. This is the new addition. This is my latest idea, and I think it's going to be good. This, I think I'm going to put my printers here. So paper printer and 3D printer. By the way, I got an awesome deal on this. It was $998. And when Dean and I went to buy it, they had all of them in the store with $250 off. So that was pretty rad. Saved 250 bucks on this bad boy. But it's basically a giant tool chest, except I'm not in my garage. Why do I need a giant tool chest? Well, let me show you. I want to be able to come over here and when I'm live streaming or doing, you know, I've got all these products and stuff over here, right? I want to be able to grab stuff for videos and live streams and when I test. So like I know right now I'm working on lots of caps for different uh, fertilizers and stuff that we're going to do. Like here's a green one that we're going to launch for, it's actually not fertilizer, brand new product. And this one will turn green and get our logo and that kind of stuff. And that'll be um, uh, probably easy green. So I've got stuff I'm working on, but then also like, oh, I need, like right here, I've got a scale because I was weighing fish food to see how much do we want to sell to people. Just a TDS meter. And I've got all these little meters and things that I'm always like, where is that thing? So that can live here. And then next drawer down, I've got, you know, it's right now a couple of, uh, power meters. So this is the one that's made to do underwater. This is the one that I've had for like five or six years. So I can compare them and do different tests and, you know, I can put a tank up here and do it, or I can do a whole video about it right here and be showing you guys with all the meters. And then I've got, you know, like sound equipment because you guys want to know like, well, how loud is that air pump? How loud is that thing? So it's a big displayable DB meter. And you've got the handheld version right here. And I've got, you know, a, a few other tools and some other stuff I want to buy to get this thing ready to, to rock and roll so that I've got the tools that I want and tools to do my job, not like, not drills, not hammers, not wrenches, you know, like I can have like, oh, what about, you know, easy green and other stuff for videos? I can have products down here ready to go. So that's, that's the goal with this bad boy. And then over here, it's got its own little plug and USB. So if I get some stuff up here that I want to work on or recharge, I can do that. Um, plus I want to get a 3D printer going because 3D printing will be how I, you know, how I did the easy flow and how I could do some intakes and stuff for different types of filters. So here we've got the clown loaches. I moved like all 40 some of them in here. You can only see a few on camera at the exact moment. There's algae uh, on the front glass and I moved this plant over even though it had algae because I want uh, to get some in here to help clean up the bulbitis. Because eventually I want bulbitis. This was in the this was in the 800 gallon, and I wanted to go back in the 800 gallon, but it's got to live somewhere. Grabbed a few crypts. Have not finished planting this at all. Put in a couple of uh, hides, if you will, or tubes. Let's see if I can show you any of them. Yeah, a couple PVC black ABS so that the the eel and other stuff can kind of go in and out of there. Got a prototype corium claw peter back there. And uh, yeah, it's been kind of working on do, redoing this whole giant room slowly but surely. Put in a, a big fake planter, well, like a pot. And this allows me to keep a ton of water in here. So now I'm keeping the plant and it's staying wet the whole time. So hopefully that'll continue to look good with our product wall. Got more, you know, more products to put up and more, more of that coming in. What else I got going on in here? Um, yeah, the, the overall goal is to shut down tanks after this one right here. So these ones will all get shut down, but I want to move like, oh, I want to take all these crypts and I want to take the, the snails and the shrimp and, and everything out of here and move them. This tank's basically already decommissioned, lights out. Just gonna chill until I need to quarantine or something. Here I've got some mono shrimps and I, I basically wanna clean up these plants a little bit. Uh, and there's baby bettas from, I gave away the, the bettas that were in here, the mouth breeding ones, but there's babies in here still that I'm raising up. So when they get a little bigger and easier to catch, then we'll, we'll move them. Uh, this tank got mollies and cypochromus. Mostly it's just a holding tank. This again will well, you know, light will get turned off. And then, uh, you know, I've got the mollies here, which I'm really enjoying. And I'm testing foods, by the way. Is this the food I'm testing? Yeah, I think it is. 
I was using it yesterday, weighing how much would fit in here. Oh, nope. Well, I am testing that too. Pretty sure I have blood worms. Um, I gotta find where, oh, down here. So this food, I, I haven't figured out, you know, the marketing part of it. I like the food, so that's that's a win. Like, I've already won with, hey, I like this food. Um, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna call it like micro, micro pellet. So if I put some of it on the, come on. Yeah, so it's it's heavily krill based, and it's real fine pellets. Like the the fish go go nuts for it. And it, what I like about it is it floats on top of the water and in the water column. I'm gonna put some extra in here so you guys can see it as I'm talking about it here. So we'll put a bunch in there, and uh, you can see it just it'll hang out on the top of the water. But all of these parts they kind of behave like like brine shrimp, where it kind of just hangs out in the water. So you'll, you'll see that kind of happen more and more. But so I've been testing different like baby foods, right? Like here's our, our fry food that I, I know and love. And then this is a baby fish food with krill. And if I, you know, if I put some of that on this to compare, you can see how different they are. Same manufacturer and everything on these two, but this one didn't pass my test. So if I go and I put that over here, you can kind of see ones like this way more orange than this one they're both pellets this ones are like different though it's more like a grind and it doesn't behave in the water the same this one's the magic one and right now i think i'm gonna call it like uh micro krill pellets because they're they're real fine like like brine shrimp those little dots you can see and what i find is uh it'll settle kind of like bacter ae or something where it'll cover all the plants all the stuff and uh, all the shrimp and everything will just start going nuts for it because it's, you know, you can kind of see it settling on the plant leaves and that lets everything get a taste. And so the fish love it. They're very good for baby fish, but also fish that want to feed midwater. Like if we go to um, Cypricromus, they pretty much only want to eat middle of the water column if they get a choice. And so we can, we can put some in there you can see it just kind of floats on top. And yeah, even these adult mollies are hitting it, but it takes a lot to, to get them you know, full. But as they're having babies, you can see them just chomping on it, going, hey, micro krill, I dig that. And here comes a cyprochromus feeding midwater. They want tiny bites a thousand times over midwater. You can see them right there. And then if we go here, there's actual fry and everything with the adults here, so this one's a better test. I kind of fed maybe a little too much on that one, but there's a lot of shrimp in here too, the blue, the blue ocean shrimp. But yeah, you'll see like all these little babies have been feeding on it and they're kind of pooping orange. And it lets all these real nice blue dream or blue ocean shrimp, they'll get it when it gets down there as it's kind of falling towards the plants right now. It's just coming onto the screen barely. And so what I like to see is, is this, this flow kind of keeps whipping back up. And so it'll stay in the water column. You can see it over here kind of suspended, right? That lets the fish eat mid water. So where normal pellets, they kind of either float or sink, this is more like a neutrally, neutrally buoyant pellet. Um, and it allows, you know, all these baby fish and the, the pygmy corridors and stuff to come over and eat. And uh, yeah, I, I just think it's something, something special here. So, you know, I've been testing foods for over a year now and very few make it through the gauntlet. I think this one's gonna make it through. We're, we're asking for pricing and packaging and we're, we're working on it. So we're still six plus months out. So sorry about that. But, you know, that's what's going on in these tanks while we're, while I'm working on it. I still have a, a day job, if you will. You can see all the Vienna guppies still chowing down. But yeah, you can see the shrimp all of a sudden, they're picking up every little scrap off of algae and plant leaves and you can see the snails are eating it off the plant leaves. So it's, I think it really does kind of replace that type of food. So kind of went too long on that, but yeah.
I don't know if I showed off pictures, my wife, me, uh, we were in Maui at that point. And then I've, I've printed out different pictures. This was my store like year one. And uh, the reason it's inspiration, like, oh, there's Flourish, which got replaced with the Easy Green. So this is how you know it was real early in my store. And we have our own root tabs now. We have our own scissors and tweezers. We did all the sponge filters, our own. And then you've got like, oh, we never redid Purigen. Not that we're going to, but like you can see, it, I just think it's a cool glimpse. Hey, test strips, we did those too. Um, into products that I know and use and just like what I want to make better. And we still sell Equilibrium. Well, we kind of have a product that's not going to replace that, but be a little different. Um, yeah, and then, you know, I've got me in front of a crowd at an Aquashella. This Benete brought to me a couple, maybe two weeks ago now. He came and visited from Singapore. If you don't know, his channel is Shrimp Sanctuary. And so he was in here, and yeah, I was kind of in a mess in the current form it is right now. But, uh, you know, when, when you want to do big transitions, you there is a transitional state. That's all I can do. And I've got uh, pictures of Peru. This is what it's like to get off the boat. You gotta walk down this slippery, wet, muddy, like crazy incline with a moving boat. And then when you get out, there's just mud to fall into and everything. And then you get to go to collect. So imagine walking down with like a net and a bucket empty and everything, and that's kind of okay. But when you're coming back, it's full of water and you're wet and you're muddy and you gotta get back up and uh so yeah this just reminds me of peru and then you've got one of the trips that uh randy who's vice president of the company dean and myself wearing gopros and and making you guys the videos so just starting to print out more of the pictures and by the way all these pictures so one of my goals have been for a while is to print more pictures or just use pictures and so all these goals were taken with an iphone so the print quality it's pretty good. You can see, you know, like on this one picture right here, which was, you know, 11 years ago or something. It's not as sharp. Well, my phone wasn't as sharp 11 years ago. But, you know, for the most part, printing them out at, at normal sized uh, pictures, pretty good. So my goal is to take pictures, live in that moment, and actually utilize them instead of just, yeah, it's never going to get seen again. So... Uh, let's see here. We take a look at the Shabunkins. I think there's one clown loach left. I got to catch out of here. These guys are looking good. So you've got mom and dad there. And you've got baby right here. He's growing up or she or it. It is growing up. And so, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what I'm, what I'm doing yet. Uh, I was going to make the 800 gallon goldfish, but... Now I've got this rad plan for the 800 gallon that I really want to see. So I'm kind of jonesing at the, to replant it, get clown loaches in there. I want to do Congo Tetras. I want to do uh, maybe a flag fish in there, some other stuff, which then opens that up, right? So that those fish can go here. I got something I could do there. Those could be goldfish, or I could do uh, maybe think an African cichlids, which, you know, I'm not known for, but I still love African cichlids. I, I mean, I pretty much love all fish, so, but I'm keeping more of what I want to keep. This has got to go into storage. And uh, if we look at the other side of the room where the 800 gallon was, it looks huge. And now it's just kind of set up for entertainment purposes. I still have rocks and, and fake logs and everything in there, but you can see it's a Roku and we've got the Munsters pinball machine. We've got the uh, ping pong table we got to move. NBA jams and haven't haven't finished this room obviously still got to take down like the sound panel and and all of that like there's there's lots of stuff to be done done but yeah each day I just kind of pick more to work on the business you know whether it's you know a product whether it's an online website whether it's testing a product you know making video today is making video after meetings so very soon, I'm going to bring a bunch of fish in. Um, I just haven't yet. That's the... I want to... So my, my, my process here is the hope is to just start at one end and start making them better. So if this is my, my chair, right? I hang out here. You can see all the clown loaches and everything. 
So I need to move the magnet cleaner so I can magnet clean these. I want to get something to eat, eat that algae a little bit. I need to plant a few more plants. Start getting easy green in there. And just enjoying the con loaches and everything. Keeping them at 81 degrees, by the way, a little warmer. And those are just the, the $50 African Tetras. So those will probably go in the, the big old 800 gallon with the Congos as well. Or they'll stay here with African Cichlids. Haven't quite decided. And then if I'm at work, boom, I see these tanks and I can see all the way to that tank. So my thought is why not start with this tank, which I was testing a product there, and this tank, which it's pretty much ready to go. This tank is all cloudy because we would fill the rocks and everything. But that's kind of, uh, yeah. But I, I keep holding myself up because I want to do testing. So this one was how devastating is the algae clean out? And I wanted to know, could it take out this green crud? It kind of does some. It also says it kills uh, shrimp and, and snails. And I will tell you, that is true. I think it's killed the majority of the snails and shrimp. I didn't have any shrimp in there. It also killed my fish, so that, that was an awesome. It killed my, my, my few fireball platies. I had three in there. Uh, the pleco made it okay. But I was overdosing it and trying to test the limbs, see if I wanted to sell it and see would it kill the algae. And it's like, well, there's still a lot of blackberry algae. So maybe not, maybe it's only good at hair algae. These plants are looking pretty sad though from the overdosing. Where this has the hair algae on it, same, you know, same from the 800 gallon. And uh, I just need to get some fish in there to, to eat a little bit. So I think officially I'm not selling this yet because I'm afraid too many people are going to lose their inverts and it's such a narrow, only treats certain types of algaes. So now I can kind of get in there and, and remove any remaining livestock, you know, snails and that kind of stuff and bleach it. Um, yeah, where oddly enough, like I put in a lot of bleach in this tank and another tank, the sn some snails live through it. This tank right here has been bleached and I'm talking, took the bleach, went glug, 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 glug. And then they live through it and I go, there's no way. So when Dean was here, I also went glug, 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 glug. And these guys still, these Malaysian trumpet snails still live through it, bulletproof. I love this thing, but it was mostly the testing. Ram's horn, not a chance. Malaysian trumpet snails, yeah, those things are gangster. So these tanks will still have them. I can, I can put in a loach and they'll eat them. That's fine if I want. Uh, but I wanted to test and learn. Like that's why I keep aquariums. Over half of it is learning for me. I wonder what happens if, I wonder if plants would die to bleach. Because if you had asked me three weeks ago, of course, like a half gallon of bleach will kill snails. Of course. Here ago, though it didn't, right? So I kind of wanted to test like, okay, what about java moss and you know, a little bit of other plants in here? And the answer is it will kill it. So I'm hoping it's real easy just to get in there and give it a little scrub-a-dub-a-doo. And that way uh, I get rid of any contaminants because I have that java moss that I didn't want. But then also in this tank where it came from, there's little bits, yeah, right here, of that weird goo algae stuff that I tried to kill over there. Couldn't kill it there either. Uh, so I don't want to transfer that to more tanks, but I love those decorations. So the goal is get them clean and sterile with, with bleach, change a bunch of water, dechlorinate, and then move them. Like I kind of want, I love this big rock. I kind of want to get some stuff going in and out of that. So that might be part of the first one or two scapes down here that I'll be working on. And uh, one of my big things has been moving down light. So, you know, they might look a little dim, but maybe not actually on camera. But less algae cleaning. Oh. Dang you, 800 gallon creating that glare. It was all perfect until I brought that 800 gallon in and then Hopefully when I fill it with water, it'll change the way the light's coming out of it. And if I put uh, greenery and stuff in there, that'll help blend that out. So it's not as bright, but yeah, that's, that's where we're at. You know, I wanna clean up some more rocks and you know, all this could be done. So part of it is all this could be done in like a week. 
if, or, or you know, maybe a weekend or, but my, my big goal as you've been seeing is I want to enjoy it. And I find that I am having better ideas. I'm enjoying it more, doing it in bite-sized chunks. And I want each one to be like, well, what do I want to do in that tank? Like I've got all this greenery on the right-hand side. Do I maybe put a rock on that side? What fish do I want to live in there? You know, and that's part of it is like, is it just a live bear? Is it a live bear and some shrimp? Is it, uh, you know, part of me thinks, well, I can put the baby African cichlids that I'm going to get from Zenzo there for three months. And that's how it used to be, right? It used to be when I was just a hobbyist and I only had 20 tanks or something, right? It wasn't, what is this going to be forever? It was, what am I going to do with it now? And like, yeah, I could raise African cichlids in there for six or eight months. Then I could move them and then do something else. Meanwhile, like that plant will get cleaned up. The African cichlids will probably pull all that hair algae right off there for me and fix it. Like, that sounds great. And then like, okay, well, what are you doing with the next aquarium? I don't know yet. And uh, I need to go shopping for some fish at the store. And I just know that I want to, like, I know for sure... I kind of want that tank right there actually to be mollies because I really am enjoying the balloon mollies watching them. Some of those and some shrimp would be pretty good, but you know, it's uh, it's all a work in progress. So if I if I did like one of these a week, maybe I think I'd be having a lot of fun. I'm not trying to stress myself though, and that's the whole downsizing, the whole reorganizing is to make sure I enjoy it and not just sweeping everything under the rug so that. You know, like I could easily take all those rocks and wood and put it behind the thing and it's gone, out of sight, out of mind. But I want to bleach them all, get rid of any black beard algae or anything like that and have them ready to go for the next tank I want to do. So I'm actually finishing the job as opposed to like, well, let's make it look good. And so, you know, I've got a lot of plants I still want to use. So I want to move those over. I want to put more root tabs in there. I want to do all these things and uh, enjoy it. That's That's the... And I want to see how the 800 gallon comes together. Lighting is a big thing for me. So I need to put some more light blockers that I've shown you. I finally got another one to put up. So that'll be good. And uh, just kind of see how is it going to... Like I've got these products on my desk where if I clean my desk off today, it'll be like that again by Friday because each meeting like, well, let me grab that. Let me grab that. Let me grab that. What does it say on this product? What does that say? What, what do we want to change? And so I almost need to like replace this with another product thing for products that allows me quick access. Printer can go up on that thing. And uh, you know, then I've got a workable space. People can sit over here. And that's, I have been spending, so I now spend in this room, I'm probably spending 50 or 60 hours a week. Where before it was just come out here and feed, film, do whatever I need to do. So. In terms of spending time out here, way more. I am doing, you know, normal work. Like, you know, I had three hours of meetings today. So that is part of the time. But with the three hours of meeting, they're still like, well, I could feed real quick. Oh, I could grab that piece of algae real quick. Oh, I've got an idea over there real quick. So, yeah, it's a work in progress. Just so I would update you guys. And I know that, I, you know, I wanted to bring you from where we were, which was pretty low. If we went down even lower... Corey's tearing everything down. He's getting out of the hobby. Oh, no. To slowly bring it back. Everything, you know, kind of where I've enjoyed it was very slow buildups. When you slowly make something, it's more likely to enjoy it and less likely to crash. When, you know, like I brought Aquapros over and we redid all these tanks in a weekend. I was exhausted. They ended up looking okay, but... Most of them didn't have my heart and soul into it. It's like, well, it looked good. And you had to like, you had an hour to figure it out. Like, okay, this fish, this plant, this scape. Where if I've got a week or two to figure out each one and, and go like, what do I want to keep? Is that, is that one white clouds? Is that one African cichlids? Is that one loaches? Is that one guppies? Is it just shrimp? Is it, you know what? I want to keep a, a goldfish in there. Or is it, I can do anything. And so I don't, I'm not approaching it with what would be best to teach you guys. Anything like that. In fact, I just want to teach you guys, keep what you want to keep. Keep it for as long as you want to keep it. When you stop enjoying it, move it on. And so that's what I've been doing. I've been just, you know, a lot of fish left. And I think, you know, I can't decide on the Vienna guppies yet if they're actually leaving or staying. But I'll say that towards the end of like, well, I'll keep setting stuff up. And if I don't find something I want to keep right now more than those, I'll keep them. If I do, 
and I'll move them. So yeah, I'm looking forward to do some shopping at the store again and uh, just looking for stuff that inspires me. It's not new stuff, by the way. It's just like, oh yeah, I forgot how much I love that fish. Why don't I keep that? And uh, yeah, so hopefully you guys are, you know, that's what you guys probably do every day. So the, the problem I have right now though is I have so few fish, it's actually hard to test foods and some of the products. So I need to get over the hump, set up some more tanks. Like right now, those freeze dried blood worms, the only things I can eat them are like clown loaches. I could feed them to the goldfish a little bit, but they'll eat anything. And then the mollies. So I could do with having some other tetras and other stuff like you guys would have some bettas to actually test and say, how, how much do they like it? Is it good? Should we launch this one? Is our own freeze dried? But I haven't finished the testing yet, so we haven't taken action. All right, well, I guess I'll flip the camera around so you know I'm still alive. Uh, yeah, that's all I've got for today. I've got more stuff to do. I want to set more stuff up. That's really, I want to document it. Then I want to set up, move stuff, sort stuff, and just get to a better spot to where everything's in a place. It's got a home, whether it's fish, whether it's a measuring instrument, whether it's a product, whether it's an idea, whether it's, you know, whatever it is, wanted to, uh, have a spot to go to. And, uh, me included, I got my new spot. So I think we're on the right track. I will talk to you guys later.